Hello there. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, Professor of Pathology at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and I would like to welcome you to our program, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. Our program is part of Path Presenter and the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, which uh, is a great way to access and uh, view digital slides and digital materials. And our case today comes from uh, the realm of um, GI pathology. Uh, it's an older patient who came to the emergency room complaining of uh, some problems actually related to a decubitus ulcer. Um, and um, she was found to have some uh, additional problems um, as uh, we looked at uh, her uh, radiographic findings. Uh, she found she was had, noted to have a significant abnormality intra-abdominally. Um, and of course, this workup was related to some pain and other uh, vague symptoms that were pertinent to the GI tract. Um, here's a representative uh, view from a CT scan showing uh, what was seen. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of black space here that seems to track around structures, uh, segments of bowel, um, highlighting them. Um, and that has the same uh, density, of, of course, as the surrounding uh, airspace. Um, <clears throat> this uh, radiographically is fairly characteristic of uh, pneumatosis. Um, and there are a number of things that have been identified clinically as being associated with this, specifically uh, any sort of ischemic bowel uh, uh, could be a cause for this, uh, necrotizing enterocolitis in the neonatal population, of course, uh, but also a number of infections, especially those infections that are associated with uh, gas-producing organisms. Um, additionally, when patients have obstructive uh, dilatation, sometimes that can lead to cracks or uh, defects that uh, result in uh, gas leaking out into the interstitial tissues. Uh, and this can happen both with obstruction and non-obstruction. Uh, rarely, other uh, problems like chronic lung disease, and so scleroderma, chemotherapy, and other sorts of problems can be re re uh, associated with this uh, particular uh, problem. So let's take a look at what we found under the microscope. Here's a representative section of the bowel, uh, which was a portion of transverse colon that we received. As you can see, uh, the mucosa looks quite uh, unremarkable. And in fact, in our case, uh, the mucosal surfaces were entirely unremarkable. No evidence of ischemic changes or otherwise. But the uh, uh, pericolic tissues showed uh, massive uh, dilatate, dilated spaces, very thin walled, uh, many of them as you can see here. Uh, a few of them had a uh, little foci of uh, inflammation, uh, as is evident here. And uh, particularly of note here is the presence of giant cells, which is a fairly characteristic feature of this entity uh, with some associated neutrophils, eosinophils, and other inflammatory cells. Um, as we look uh, further, you can see, uh, again, that these are very uh, thin-walled uh, spaces. Occasionally, you may get a sort of uh, fatty uh, component of this if there is a, a release of uh, fatty tissues or a lysis of fat uh, into these tissues. Uh, but in general, we see just this mixed uh, inflammatory population, thin-walled spaces, and uh, abundant, uh, clear, empty space. Here's another section, again, further illustrating the variable sizes to these uh, spaces, some associated hemorrhage, perhaps, in some areas. Uh, and in virtually uh, all of these areas, you can find little foci like this, where you've got multinucleate foreign body type giant cells, and in general, sort of a, a, a pretty vigorous histiocytic reaction surrounding this gas, uh, trying to, uh, to diminish it or to, to uh, digest it in uh, that sort of a manner. So in our case, uh, we did not identify any evidence of ischemic bowel or necrotizing enterocolitis. Uh, cultures, of course, were done, but uh, no specific gas producers were identified. And probably this patient has a form of uh, non-obstructive dilatation that's causing uh, this. She was obese uh, and may have had some uh, restrictive lung disease. Uh, in general, this is a disorder that can be seen in children and adults. 
uh, and even neonates in some circumstances. Um, and it can be both of the more benign form, such as in our case, or a very fulminant, uh, progressive, and potentially uh, life-threatening uh, disorder. Uh, radiographically, particularly in adults, this can often resemble neoplasia, uh, and the patients typically will have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Uh, we've already illustrated the histologic findings with thin walled cystic spaces, giant cell reaction. And in general, this is really more of a finding uh, rather than a, a specific diagnosis per se. So our final diagnosis on this case, uh, our final finding on this diagnosis is uh, pneumatosis cystoides intestinalis, um, a uh, finding of note, not uh, unexpected, but <clears throat> a, a somewhat uh, interesting uh, finding to see uh, if you're not used to seeing uh, these sorts of uh, resection specimens. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you do, that you'll uh, uh, hit the like button. Uh, we, of course, always welcome you to uh, subscribe to our channel and hope that uh, you and your colleagues uh, in training or otherwise will find these materials use useful. Uh, we uh, intend to continue to produce videos from time to time. Interesting case materials come along and we'd like to share it and hope that you'll uh, join with us. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.